I just, there's a real anointing here for breakthrough this morning. And I know that God wants to do something in all of your lives and my life as well. That hand is so important to God that you're holding. That's the child of God. They have issues, concerns, they have hurt, they have pains. And I believe that God is the resurrection God. He's the God that will take every situation. Do you believe that? Amen. He says, ask by faith, hallelujah, and believe in your heart that the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God, and you shall be healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So whatever is weighing heavy on your heart this morning, we're going to pray right now. Amen. Because I believe, hallelujah, that the Lord is here, and the Lord is great, hallelujah, and he is worthy to help you out today. Let's pray together for the hands that you're holding. We pray for that hand. We pray, God, hallelujah, that God, whatever the circumstance, whatever the issue, whatever that is happening right now, God, Lord, I pray for a shift right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray for a shift, God. Lord, hallelujah, that something is going to happen right now in the name of Jesus. For the finances, hallelujah. We're believing for resources. We're believing for our strength and our walk. Amen. We're praying right now for this hand that we're holding, God. Bless them. Bless their family. Oh, restore them, God. I pray that there be a move of God in their own home. I pray that there be a move of God, a fresh anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Bless them in the times are coming and going. Bless their dreams. Bless their lands. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I believe things are happening right now. We don't want to move from this presence. We want you to move, God. We need you to do something. Our dream Jesus. Our grandbabies need salvation. Our neighborhoods need a move of God. They need revival. Our community needs a change, God. Our nation is under attack, but God, we know that you shall arrive, the enemy shall be scattered. Hallelujah. We know something good is going to happen today. We thank you for the blood of Christ that's covering and protecting all of us, God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us, our homes, our family will prosper in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you celebrate the name of the Lord with me? Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Now, is this microphone, is it too loud? And if I go like that, can you still hear? You can still hear? Okay, good. I don't, I don't, huh? No, you cannot hear? It's on. Okay. Praise God. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Well, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Were you glad this morning when you woke up? Pastor Worthy had her dance going on this morning. The videos were she made it to the Lord's command. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning more about purpose, and I'm going to release what God uh, has for a prophetic word for the month of July, uh, July for 2022. It, it is a heavy, heavy word, but in a heavy word, there is a blessing. Amen. Can you hear okay? Maybe there's a, a feedback. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. We're going to look at verse 1 through 2. This is going to be our focus, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Now, it's been exciting to walk with you and join hands with you in this area of purpose. Amen? Because we've learned a lot of things during this purpose month. Whoops. And the sound system has a lot of things. Amen. And so we've learned that, that God has purpose for our life. And if you look at the screen, amen, it says, you have purpose. Can you believe that you have purpose? We, we've already gone past, I can't do it, God, because we've understood that God can for us. And God understands that God can make it there for us and he can help us. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the focus on the goal is what we need to do, not the obstacles. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Mom.
obstacles to overcome along our, draw, our walk of purpose. Amen? And that's okay because during our walk of purpose, working through the obstacles, it helps us to become stronger and to really understand and identify what it is that God has for our life. It starts out in Hebrews. Actually, I need to go there. Praise the Lord. It starts out in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We're going to start out with verse 1. The word, then I'm going to pray. Amen. And then we're going to go right to the word and we'll come back to, to uh, the second verse in a moment. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are, what does it say? Surrounded. Surrounded. Wonderful. By so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, which is, what does it say? Easily. What's that word easily? We're going to talk about that. The sin, which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Oh, Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. Lord, we need a word from heaven that is going to not just motivate us, encourage us, but one that is going to steer us up, God, that is going to give us the ability to have strength to continue on in this race, God. And Lord, I thank you that as we identify obstacles in our life and understand how we get rid of those obstacles and how we move forward, Lord, I thank you that this morning, God, you are going to move with fire in this place, freedom in this place, and most of all, Lord God, we thank you for your love, but most of all, a rhema word from heaven that is going to give us the ability to walk forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're holding our hands this morning and giving us the ability to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as a revelation word is set before us. In Jesus' name, we agree together. Amen. Amen. Notice the word in the first chapter. It says, also, also the great cloud of witnesses. This means we are to follow their course. And can somebody agree with me that following the course of the great witnesses, sometimes it's not hard. Sometimes we find ourselves distracted and we find ourselves into areas that it's like, Lord, can we move on for, further with you? Come on, somebody. Amen. Can I really get into this new chapter of my life? I want it, but I don't know if I have what it takes to get me into that new chapter because there is the obstacle in front of me. Now, I want to help us identify really what a race looks like. A race is important, isn't it? In fact, I remember going to track meets back in high school. And but in order to get to the track meet, you have to what? Build endurance. And I want to tell you something. Getting to the track right now is the most important step and walk with your relationship with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you're on the track, but as long as you're on the track is what matters. If you're sitting in a bar this morning and you're drunk, I, I can tell you that you're not on the track. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yeah. If you're fornicating and laying in bed this morning, those that are watching through social media and television, you're laying in bed with someone that you're not married to. I'm going to tell you something. You're not on the track that God has for you. But we want to pull you on the track. Amen. Because the Bible says that God is enough for everyone. Amen. And so God has enough courses in life to bring us. And thank God that every, each and every one of us has a testimony. In our life, how God has given us the strength to overcome, endure, and to carry on. And so what he was doing was Paul was laying an outline and an understanding of, hey, guys, can I just share something without telling you, not to beat around the bush, but they are desiring to kill me and my time on earth is coming to an end. And I need to make sure that you guys are going to be okay away from me. Come on, somebody. Amen. I need to make sure that you're going to be okay when I'm with you and when I'm not with you. And so the fact is today is that Paul was encouraging. He says, you need to make sure that most important that your faith is strong. Your faith is strong. Because if you have wavy strength, he says, let me warn you, you're going to easily fall into sin and temptation. If you're as weak, the enemy will snatch, snatch you up and snare you. Come on. Amen. And steal you away from the hands of God. Is that better? Yes. Okay. We're still working on it. Amen. 
That's what happens when the church grows. We work on things together, amen. And so the enemy wants to snatch you away. In fact, Jesus said, Peter, I want to warn you because the enemy desires to sift you. Wow. Well, this is not what we're we today. The enemy wants to sift us. In fact, he says, the enemy is a hungry, roaring lion that is watching in any opportunity, ready to pounce on you and devour you. Isn't that where we are today? Yeah. And then the Lord later on says, be watchful. Be watchful. And have eyes on yourself, spiritual eyes, so that you would be alert of every scheme that the enemy would try to bring towards you. Come on. Mm -hmm. So what God does is he says, I want you to run the race with endurance. And I want you to finish the race. Even though your track may have obstacles, it's not the obstacles that I'm worried about. It's where you end the race is where I'm worried about. See, obstacles are going to come in our life. People are going to get angry. We're going to get into battles. We're going to have struggles. In fact, we were made for battles. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We found we are even made to struggle. Come on, somebody. Because in our weakness, he is strong. Amen. Amen. When we fall down and where we come short of, God is right there to help us. So we have to understand that he was encouraging us. Hey, if you can be like the great witnesses, the great cloud of witnesses, you're going to be okay because I know you're going to the kingdom. <laughs> but if you're going to be like everybody else that falls into sin easily, I'm concerned about you. Because you're the ones that may just be left behind. You're the ones that may set down the trophy and say, I wish to follow the world. And Paul was saying, be careful of these things. Because they may look good in the physical eye, but in the spiritual eye, they're detrimental. They'll destroy you. They'll eat you alive. Number one, get goal focused on the race. Actually, let me change that. Get goal focused in the race. What is your goal for the race? I've never ever heard a race runner that ever went to the, the team, to the coach and say, today, I'm gonna lose this race on purpose. <laughs> the coach would be like, can I just slap you silly? Because you just wasted my time. All the times that I was coaching you and, and working to build you and giving you the resources, coaching you on how to have endurance to finish the race you wasted it all if you're going to lose this race on purpose can I tell you something we have a lot of people in the body of Christ right now that are saying it's okay if I lose the race because I'm going to give up now so many brothers and sisters in Christ are willing to throw in the towel in the middle of the race when they're almost there at the finish line mm -hmm. and God is saying with Paul he's saying don't do it man don't do it girl you got to finish the race so that you can end up with your father as he's your great prize. Amen? Amen? So the number one thing is we have to understand is a race is not a sprint. Come on. You can try to run as fast as you can, but if you go in there thinking that this race is a sprint, guess what you're going to do? You're going to use all your strength in your body to run as hard, as fast as you can, and you are going to get weak. You need to understand that the race is set about endurance, yeah. not speed. It doesn't matter how fast you get to that, that finish line. Can you have the endurance to get your body mobile to make it to the finish line? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I remember doing the pass the baton. You remember those? Yeah. Right? And we talked about before that if you pass that baton to someone and they drop it, you're going to have their head. And all the team workers are like this. Why did you drop it? The baton was not made to bounce towards you. In fact, the baton was what? Just made to bounce. And it's going to go any direction that it wants to go. And most of the time when that baton is dropped, the first thing it does, it either bounces towards you or away from you. And what? Nine out of ten times, what do you do? You accidentally kick the baton because you didn't know the direction of the course of that baton was coming. You had no insight. That's what happens with us is sometimes we get in the race and we're not aware of the situations and we're caught off guard for everything that was in front of us. Obstacles is not your greatest enemy. Your mind is your greatest enemy. If you have enough uh, thoughts and enough wisdom, 
You can think yourself through prayer, come on, through prayer, and you can get through that obstacle. What kind of obstacles are on your track today? Is it your sickness that distracts you so much? Come on, let's be real today. Your finances. Let's just lay it out. I can't give to God because I don't have finance to give to God. If you don't have finance to give to God, you will not have finances. Can I be honest with you? Mm -hmm. Because it says in Malachi, give unto God what is God's and give to see, you know, give, give to Caesar what's Caesar's, right? But if you're not giving up to God what's God's, you're robbing your chance of making it to the end with provision. Amen? So finances are an obstacle. Come on. Amen. Dead dreams and no goals. We should say shattered dreams. Because if you have a shattered dream, you will not have enough strength to get your dreams going. No vision, no insight, no clarity. These are all obstacles on your track today. But guess what? God says, I, just like we sang today, I'm more than enough to give you what you need so you can make it through the obstacles. Amen? Amen. So this race is going to call for focus and endurance. And it's also going to do this. Every race needs a participant. I want you to write that down. Every race needs a participant. Because if you don't have a participant, who are you racing against? Come on. Amen. It's like showing up to a race, Brother G. <laughs> G-Man is what we're calling him. Yeah, it's like showing up to a race by yourself. Right, Carlins? When you show up to a race by yourself, what is the fun? It's like, man, I put on my running shoes. I wash my hair. I want to look good to have my, my goodness look good for my outfit. But the most I've been watching my weight, I've been trying to get in shape, I'm getting ready, and nobody shows up to the race. How would you feel? Oh, God. What a waste of time. It's a Saturday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, the sun is shining, and you're right there at the starting line, and nobody else is there. But you have a cloud of great witnesses that are along the track, ready to root you on and say, you can do it because Jesus Christ is with you. You want to know who you're participating with? You better make sure that Jesus is on this with you. If he's not on the race, you're in the fight and you're all alone. You will not be able to focus. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's read the next one. It's verse 2. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Hallelujah. So we're not going to talk about in snares, trying to snares us. But then watch this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down on the right hand of the Father, the right hand on the throne of God, which is the Father. Amen. So the race calls for a participant, which is Jesus. He has, we want a participant with Jesus. Amen. Our eyes must be locked on the course laid before us. Have you ever seen anybody run like this? No. You're going to smack into a wall or you're going to hit a teammate, right? But eventually you're going to end up on your face because you're going to trip over your shoes. You cannot run looking from the back. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, if I try to run looking behind me, guess what happens? It's going to now make me off balance and I will not have momentum or strength or endurance to finish that race properly. Right? Because I'm off balance if I'm running like this. Trying to see who's behind me and everything behind me. Do you know that people in the body of Christ are running that way? Yeah. Because they're looking at the stuff that they really desire rather than looking at the prize that's set before them. I desire to go to that bar tonight and hit on those girls. Stop that. Come on. Let's be honest. Right? Mm -hmm. Or the girls. I desire to go to the bar tonight and shake my booty to draw attention to myself. Enough of that. Right? Right? Well, in the past, the church treated me better and they respected my title. Stop that. Come on. I'm going to help you. You got to focus on what is on your plate and what is in front of you right now because that's what your focus is. So let me ask you this what are you focusing on right now that you feel is bigger than your God that wants to help you through that? Come on, co-workers, are they giving you a headache? Are they giving you a brain ache? 
Come on. I get it. Working sometimes for a worker, for a boss, can be very stressful, can it? Especially if they don't acknowledge you and encourage you enough to keep you going. A boss that tells you that you're never going to be quality type for their company will annoy you. Come on. Let's be honest. What obstacles are you looking at? It's because of your children and not with God? Because of your finances? Because of what you thought that you could do better in the past? That is not going to help you. Because the Bible says, live today as if it is your last day, not worried about the old, but look for the new, right? So in other words, when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to have a fresh track in front of me that I'm going to run the course. Remember this, don't go around the problem because this is not a zigzag race. It's not. You're zigzagging back and forth, trying to get around the problem or trying to duck around things is only going to slow you down and it's never going to fix the problem. Can we go a little bit deeper today? The problem with the church, can I be honest with you, is we're too symptom focused and not the root focused. We look at the symptoms. In fact, when you go to a doctor, don't you get annoyed by all the questions that the doctor asks you when you already know what the problem is? So how long has this pain been acting up in your hip? Well, doctor, I already wrote on the piece of paper for the last week. Mm, for the last week, okay. And you've noticed that your pain's been there for the last week. Uh-huh, I just told you. Did you notice that a doctor asks a lot of questions? Because they're not looking at the symptoms. They're trying to get to the root so that they can help you. If they give you the wrong medication that does not help you, or if they give you the wrong advice or the wrong surgery, come on. Imagine if you go to surgery and your surgery needs to be effective towards your hip and they give you surgery on your arm, right? Well, how good is that going to help you? It's like, doctor, I told you my problem is my hip. My arm was fine until you mess with it. It's because they didn't ask enough questions. On your course, on your track, you have to ask a lot of questions to make sure that you know what the root is to your symptom. Just because you sneeze, I mean, you have a cold. It could be a dust in the air, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're cleaning your TV to your realm and you breathe it in and you sneeze and someone says, oh, you got a cold. Doesn't mean you have a cold. Get to the root. It was the dust, not the cold. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's the problem with the church though, isn't it? Is we're too quick to look at a symptom and diagnose it before we really understand where is this coming from. And because of it, we don't have people having victory. We have people having relapse. Stuck. Because they don't know how to run the course that is set before them. Instead of taking care of the obstacle, they're quick to kick the obstacle out of the way. But believe me, when you come around a mile track, that obstacle will still be in your way. Right. Another problem that the body of Christ is, they don't know how to stay in their lane. Mm -hmm. They're too worried about what everybody else is doing around them than to focus what is in their lane. What do they do? Well, did you see what Mary Lou was doing down at the grocery store? She was hitting on the clerk when I know that woman's married. It's none of your business. Come on. Can we be honest? Yes. We're focused on what everybody else is doing. They shouldn't have got the worship position. They shouldn't have been the deacon. They shouldn't have been the elder. They shouldn't have got that church building. Why is their ministry better than mine when I'm better preaching them? Stop that foolishness. You're causing havoc in your lane that you don't need. We got to learn to be dealers with our own problems. I, I, I feel the Lord is actually pulling me from my notes today. Can I just follow the Lord? I want you to look at your neighbor. In fact, I wasn't going to teach us for two weeks, but I feel the Lord is calling me to teach us today. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a CPS. You are a CPS. Do you know what CPS stands for? Child Protective Services. You are not a child protective service. You are a chief problem solver. Can, can we go with this route today with the Lord? You are a chief problem solver. You know how to look at the symptom to get to the root. In fact, you may not be good at it, but God is very good at it. Amen. You are a chief problem solver. Why? Because I believe that we're talking to leaders today. Amen. 
I believe that everyone in this building is a leader. Praise the Lord. We're chief problem solvers. And so if you're a chief problem solver, what do you do? That means you're definitely going to focus right in front of you before anything else happens. In fact, I've learned in the last probably three months that a problem is a problem. And if you don't deal with it, according to my wife, and she has great wisdom, the problem will only get bigger if you don't deal with it. A chief problem solver does not say this because what they have is they have an issue in their life. Do you want to know what they have? They have an issue that it will go away. It will fix itself. You know what? Your obstacle will never go away and it's never going to fix yourself. In fact, your obstacle was made to bruise you and chastise you. But you can overcome the obstacle by being a chief problem solver. Is this helping you this morning? Because that's what God calls you. He says, I'm the wisdom for you to solve the problem. But you have to solve the problem yourself. Come on. Mm-hmm. If you can't fix the problem, it will not go away. And that obstacle is going to be in front of you. And guess what happens? It's going to slow you down from the purpose that God has given you. Is this helping you this morning? Come on, chief problem solver. Amen. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So if we can keep our eyes on the, on the course, we're going to see the problems so we know how to deal with the problems or solve the problems. Amen? Look at your name. It says, there's no problem too big that we cannot solve. You want to know why you can't solve that problem? Because you have not identified that you are purpose to solve that problem. If that problem is in your lane, You've been anointed to solve that problem. Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus overcame the world so that we what? Would overcome. So CPSs know how to solve great problems. They know how to identify them. Can I tell you something? People with no self-esteem who are wounded and crippled do not know how to identify what is a problem and what is not a problem. But CPSs know how to get to the problem, find out the symptom, and get to the root so that this thing's going to go away. Amen? Mm-hmm. We have stuff that we've allowed to get rooted into our trap that no longer belongs there. Come on. Mm-hmm. Well, my mommy treated me horrible. You know what? Your mommy passed away five years ago. you got to get over that. Because there's nothing you can do to fix that now but give it to Jesus. Come on, they abandoned me. Come on now, give it to Jesus. CPSs know how to deal with things accordingly and efficiently so that they can stay on track on the race. Amen? So what happens here? The scripture said that we're to lay aside every heavy weight, every sin, every issue. Because if you're weighed down, you will not be able to run the weight accordingly. Can you imagine me trying to lift this pulpit and run down the street with it to say that I've actually run my race today? No, that's not a good thing, is it? The lighter you are, the faster you are because you have more endurance. Amen? Guess what weight, heavy weight does? It makes you breathe like this. Especially when you go over to tie your shoes. I've dealt with that before. <laughs> it's like, oh! Let me get that shoe on. You're trying to get it up higher so you don't have to bend over as much. Come on. Amen? Extra weight is not going to help you. That's what sin does. It weighs you down. It ties you down. You're like a dog on a chain. You can only go so far. You're not a dog, but that's just an illustration. Amen? Is this helping you this morning? Hallelujah. When you have purpose, you must get to the obstacle and you must get it out of the way so that you can win. How many times can you win on your track? Daily. Because every day you're going to face something that the Lord says you have victory over that if you follow me. Daily you will have wins. Isn't that awesome? Number two, you got to clear the track. You got to clear the track. If you can only be in your lane and there's things in front of you, if this is my lane and I came here and there's a box in front of me and it's a big box, I cannot move into someone else's lane because I'm going to knock them down and that's going to disqualify me. Amen? 
and somebody's going to get hurt because of my negligence, trying to run around an obstacle that I have to deal with. And clear the track. you got to make track so that you can run the race. Is this helping you this morning? So you can't run a race with a cluttered track. It doesn't make sense. Have you ever tried it before? Does that make any sense? It's like, which lane is mine? I don't know. I think that's yours down there. I can't see my lane. I can't run my lane. you got to make sure that your, your track is clear and it's ready to go. Get rid of those tripping zones. What are tripping zones? There's bad habits. Can I make it clear today that there's bad habits and there's good habits? Amen? I hope you have a lot of good habits, more than your bad habits. Amen? What's bad habits in life? Smoking, lying, fornication, whatever. Alcoholism? Come on. Abuse? Not able to finish the race because you are considered yourself already as a loser? That's a bad habit. Just wake up in the morning and say, if my day just goes the way it is, it's okay. No, you are not made for bad days. Come on, somebody. You are made to strive forth with excellence in the Lord. Amen? Come on. Get rid of those habits and make good habits. Amen? Because you want to know why? Bad habits is going to take your time away. It's going to slow you down. And if you're staying in the lane, you're going to understand your assignment and your purpose. Stay in that lane. That's what you're called for. Nobody can do what you can do. You're called for that lane. Nobody's going to end up where you, God will have you end up. You are, hallelujah, you are a blessing all by yourself with God and the help of the body of Christ around you. Amen. You will finish the race strong. Remember, you're not in this alone. You have purpose. This is your assignment. This is your calling. Run that race with endurance. Run it with full force speed. Amen. And you'll see a difference in your life. The third one is where I really want to go today. It's called time killers. We have time killers. They're the worst enemy in your life. You know what a time killer is? I should have only been on social media for four minutes, but I'm on there for six hours. You just wasted purpose. You could have been reading a book, getting more understanding. You could have been writing a letter to a friend. You could have been diagnosing your walk with the Lord. But you spent six hours today on social media. You know what you do? Hide your favorite apps. Break that habit and get into something else. Well, Pastor, I don't have time. Listen to a podcast when you're on the way to work. Listen to today's message tomorrow until you get it right. Don't waste time. You want to know why? Time killers is what the enemy loves because he's made to waste your time. So you will not identify with purpose. Is this helping you today? Come on. You spend more time. You got time killers that are stealing your relationship with Christ because your prayer life is struggling. Come on. You know what they should have called this? The race of prayer. Because if we're racing for prayer, how much stronger would we be with God? How much more would we know? Amen? Hallelujah. So you can't run the race with clutter on your track. We've already understood that. Those time killers will clutter you up. The tripping zones, they're the bad habits. They're going to steal in your purpose. we got to stay focused, right? So now the time killer is, yeah, you got to stay focused. Building purpose is your most important thing in your life right now. Building that track strong. Gathering a fresh breath of strength that builds momentum. Gather it. You know what that fresh breath is? The presence of God. If you don't have the presence of God in your track, you will not win this race. What kills the presence of God? Time killers. Wasting time. Looking back at the old ways when you should be moving forward. They're time killers. God's already sick of that. People already counseled you, helped you get through it, but you're still wasting time from things of the past. Let that go. Hallelujah. Use your time well and get a fresh breath of strength. Amen? Hallelujah. The fact is this also. It doesn't matter who is the fastest on your track. Watch this. What matters is who has the one with the greatest endurance and strategy. That's what's going to win a race. Amen? Strongest endurance and strategy. 
Hallelujah. If you can keep your track clear, you're going to move more. Amen? The prophetic word for July 2022. I want to share this and we're going to go back into the of today's uh, teaching. July is a month of walking in strong faith. This is what the Lord has told me for this month. A month of being open to new things that God has for you. July is a month that, how do you one second, I misspelled a word. Okay, this is going to be the month of inflations, more inflations. It's going to be a month that things are going to increase as far as finance, uh, financial spendings. Recession, as a stock market, is going to have more pressure this month. Watch what's going to happen. The call of prayer will be upon the body of Christ more and more each and every day. The earthquake in Afghanistan, I remember prophesying in 2020, the beginning, when the Lord told me something was going to happen in Afghanistan. And I told you guys that, and I don't know what it is, but something was going to happen. I remember prophesying that on the breakout conference. This last week or so, the earthquake happened. And it was to show us that God was preparing for revival in the Middle East. That he had to show us a physical shakening so we can understand the spiritual shakening. July is a month that puts in place massive transition for the body of Christ. I'm talking massive. The more that you understand purpose and the more you identify, you are going to see what God is calling you into. July is a month that, that, um, that unex unpredictable and unbelievable current events are going to happen starting in July through the months of, of summer. This is what the Lord says to you this day. That I've already poured out my spirit upon all flesh. For this is the days of the great, great transition and shifting upon the body of Christ. For this is the hour that your faith will be challenged. But pray to me, and I will strengthen you, saith the Lord. As I have said in my word, as the years go on and on, the days will be darker and darker. But fear not, for I am with you. And as I have already set in place great provision and evidence that I will be with you, hard times must happen now in order to move things forward for the return of my son. Be watchful, be alert, and aware of the signs and times. Satan feels that he is one, but I am the Lord. As great, as, as great victory is in my hand, I will also put victory in your ground. As the gates of hell will not prevail against my people, but I will keep you and watch over you as I have promised to you. Put on the full armor of God as the fiery darts come towards you and will not be moved. As you trust me, you shall see the enemy retreat. As a thousand may fall on the right hand and 10,000 on my left, you shall not be shaken. You must remember that in ordinary new things to come, there will always be battles as people will always fight to keep things the same or to do things their own way. But behold, I, I now do a new thing. The times of the old is shifting away and a new era of my kingdom is being displayed upon the earth. For the people will know that there truly is a God as I unlock their eyes from the lies of Satan so that they may now come into the truth. I am changing my church to be more positioned by becoming a house of prayer once again so that I will flood my church with a fresh anointing that shall bring salvation and freedom to my people. The home, your home shall be once again filled with the presence and glory as it shall be called a place. This is your house, a place of great peace. In the presence of the Lord, there is a fullness of joy. Pray and be watchful, as I am positioning watchmen on the walls yet again. They shall move with great discernment and wisdom. I will show, my, show you fresh things now that you have not seen as you pray and seek my face. I will show you my kingdom. I will do this so that you will know and understand the importance of bringing my, my fresh words to the lost and brokenhearted. For troubling times are coming quickly, and you must be prepared as more famine and hardships come upon the earth. For the days of Elijah is to come. 
For you must understand, as those days brought, they brought famines, hardships, false prophets, sickness and disease, and suicides. When I shall move with miracles, now I shall move with miracles, signs, and wonders. I shall flood your streets with my love and my wrath. As angels go before you to prepare the land for revival. Afghanistan was a physical shaking, but my children, be aware, as you are in the midst of a great spiritual shifting. I will hold you up. I will strengthen your borders, and I will use you greatly in such a time of this desperation. Open up your, your hearts to me, and rejoice in singing, for these are the days of Jehovah, and he is God that never fails. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 29, verse 11, Yours, O Lord, is greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. For that is the word of the Lord for July and going into the summer months. Do you believe this morning that there is a shifting? Did I really believe that God is uncovering the purpose of the church and he is revealing things to us? Amen? Isn't that awesome? Can I tell you something? The more that we shift his direction, the more the anointing will increase in our lives. And we're coming into the days where miracles are happening and the blind shall, be, shall see and the deaf shall hear. I want to close with this because when you're on the right track, miracles will happen and things will happen. And when you get obstacles out of the way, God will use you more. We, I'll be honest with you, we're looking at uh, either moving from here, as many of you already know, to get a better place that we can locate to. And we just touched something as, as interest. We looked at the property next door that is leasing some space. And we thought, what if we moved our youth facility over there and our children's facility to give it more space, they can become dynamic and give them room to grow and expand. Well, we went over there and then over there, we realized that it'd be tough to have two power bills. Come on, two water bills. That even though it'd be nice to expand our campus financially feasibly, it was not something that we could do now. So the, or the real estate agent called me. But before the real estate agent called me, we were getting ready to leave and I heard the Holy Spirit say, go back there. And Mike and Wayne and Pastor Worthy and myself was there. And, and as we were walking away, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go back there and pray for him, for the real estate agent. But we already knew he was a Christian because we already talked to him. He goes to a church. He says, yes, I have a couple prayer needs. One, I have a relative in the hospital that's not doing good and we're not expecting them to do good. And we have a friend that fell off a ladder and broke their back and broke, I think it was their leg or arm and they're not doing good as well. And so what do we do? We said, well, let's pray. Well, the guy called me, the real estate guy called me, and he said, well, have you prayed about the building, about expanding? And yes, we did. We prayed, and we feel that this is something that's not reasonable for us. We'd rather for a building to put things together in one building so that we only have one rent rather than two rents. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Maybe it's more feasible for us. But I believe that that day we are on assignment. One, to open up our eyes that we would know we have to move here soon, but also to open up our eyes eyes that God can do miracles. So we again, I said, hey, by the way, how are those people that we prayed for in the hospital? He says, oh man, you're not going to believe this. The one that we kind of gave up on that day was sent home well. The other one was sent home with no more of a broken back and a broken arm. God has healed both of them. Amen. Can I tell you something as I close this sermon? It wasn't because of me. It was because of the Lord. Amen. It wasn't because of Wayne and Mike and Pastor Worthy and I praying. It was because the prayers of the saints availed much. I want to challenge you this week that in order to run the course that you're in, it's going to take some prayer now. Because there's some obstacles that the Lord just released that there's some troubling times coming our way. But he also said, that's not for you. That's for the world. Mm -hmm. Amen? That we're not to be fearful. But the more that we watch the media and the more that we listen to the people, guess what's going to happen? Your faith can become weak. But an ordinary can finish strong in a race. you got to have strong faith. Come on. Can I get an amen? you got to have strong faith, you guys, so that we can move forward and do the dynamic things of the Lord. Amen? amen. So let's get the obstacles out of the way. Let's get the things that, that hinder us, the things that, that keep our feet from moving forward. Is it our mind? Is it the pains of the past? Only you know. 
Amen. Amen. Is it that our kids give us a headache or my job just isn't good enough for me? More bills than finances? Come on. That happens, doesn't it? It's like, Lord, I want to do your kingdom stuff, but it's just not there. What is the obstacle that is keeping you from being a CPS today, a chief problem solver, so that you can run the course with the Lord and do the things that you've been called to do? Amen. With every head bowed and no one looking around, if I could just see a show of hands today, Pastor, I need prayer in that area because I got some obstacles on my track. It's in my lane, and I have to face these things to get rid of these things. Anybody else? Yeah, amen. Almost half the church. Praise the Lord. More than half the church now. Praise the Lord. Let's just be honest because even pastor has some obstacles that we got to deal with. Amen. So that we can get through it. Let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to come and, and give us wisdom so that we can be the chief problem solver today. Amen. To get these things taken care of. So Lord, we just lay every obstacle down in front of us, oh God. And Lord, we just pray right now, Lord Jesus, that Lord, you would help us with these obstacles from the things of the past to the things that we're facing right now. God, we're not alone in this, but you are with us, Lord. And we know, Lord God, that Lord, that you can remove a memory, you can remove a hurt, shame and guilt. Lord, you can remove a problem because Lord, there was a man on the bed that couldn't get into the pool to see the angel. But you said, pick, pick up your bed and walk. Lord, we want to get rid of the obstacle today so we can get up and walk again, Lord. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever our people right here at the Eye of the Valley, those on television, social media that are facing right now, the family of God, Lord, I pray that that obstacle will break now in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that, Lord, that they will not go around it, but, Lord, that they are going to deal with it today and this week, God, that, Lord, that they're going to have freedom and they're going to have the victory in the name of Jesus, God. You said, Lord, for the victory of the Lord is ours. And we thank you, Father God, that we've been set up for victory, Lord God. Lord, whatever it is that we're going through, Lord God, I thank you that we're going to pick up our cross and follow you, and we're going to plow through that problem with wisdom and revelation and hallelujah, Lord God, and destroy sermon on how we can make it through to the other side so we can finish the course. We rebuke weakness right now because by the blood of Jesus Christ that is poured upon our life, we are strong in the name of Jesus. We are strong to overcome, endure, hallelujah, and to break through where God is calling us, Lord. We speak to every slam door that is not of God. We command those doors, those gates, and those, hallelujah, those windows to flood us with the vision, the purpose, and the will of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you will see us through this famine time as you did Elijah and others. Lord, we will have great provision because you are Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, for the ones that are concerned about the time and the hour that they're in right now, we say, fear not in the name of Jesus, for the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. And I declare today in the name of Jesus that they will stand again and rise again. And you challenge us, Lord God, to sing and to worship you and to rejoice. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we declare that we are going to sing and dance. Hallelujah. Not just around our problems, but through our problems as we de declare that our problems are being dealt with today, Lord God. So for every hurt, we rebuke you now. For every assignment from the enemy, we erase it now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we declare we are free, we are saved, we are delivered, and we are in the name of Jesus Christ. That I will walk this route. I will win the race in the name of Jesus. Can we agree together for, for our sister Maria's mother? Father, we lift our sister all the way down in Nicaragua. Lord, we, ha we have declared, we have decreed, and we have agreed that she is healed. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we declare right now that the healing is already happening as we know because there's been evidence. And, Lord, we will not lose a race. Hallelujah. Because, Lord, we're going to pick her up and run the race with her, Lord Jesus. The race that she shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said if two or more shall gather together, then there you are in the midst. And we declare right now the burden that Carlin's and Maria is feeling for their mother right now. Lord, I pray that you would lift the burden and that you would become the answer for the burden, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, as we we speak peace into their life, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that, Lord, this obstacle will go away and that they would see what you see and they would understand what you're doing in this hour, Lord God. We thank you for the victory of their mother being healed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. I hope this teaching helped you this morning. Amen.
because you are chief problem solvers. You may not feel like it, but we're going to get you there. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to call Pastor Kiana. <laughs> huh? Oh, we're going to be communion first. Sorry. Brother Mike. Amen. To come and do communion. Amen. Sister Luis.